MSNBC, Stephanie Rule, a.k.a. Marie Antoinette, stepped in it so hard Sunday, I'm sure she depleted her cushy savings, buying a new pair of Prada stilettos. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Rule clearly has a dim view of working Americans, but she was kind enough to share how she really feels about us. Watch. The dirty little secret here, Willie, while nobody likes to pay more, on average, we have the money to do so. Household savings hit a record high over the pandemic. We didn't really have anywhere to go out and spend. Who's this we, you snob? Don't drag that adorable Willie Geist into your dim view of humanity, you harpy. He just ran a sub for our New York City marathon. The actual dirty little secret is leftist elitist, the absolute worst kind whose snobbery is only outweighed by their cultural frigidity. They're horrible at keeping secrets. It's no secret people like Stephanie Rule think little people are dirty. And this ass-backward notion that people were sitting on piles of cash and gold during the luxury of the pandemic is as laughable as it is insulting. The federal government has turned a trickle of money into a fire hose and has oversaturated the economy with free cash. Now a bunch of people are sitting around trying to buy fewer things, sending prices skyward and coming off a pandemic. Their collective PTSD is sending shoppers into hoarding overdrive. Monetarists have seen this coming for a long time, and inflationary whispers are now deafening screams because at some point this transitory inflationary boom goes south. It will turn into a massive recession. The Fed will have no way of controlling it, and that, friends of the 70s, will slow down the economy and lead to that Jimmy Carter classic we all love, stagflation. And that, of course, will play along simultaneously with the disco hits of high interest rates and high unemployment. That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I don't like it. Yeah, aren't the effects of big government great? It's like being hungover during a stomach flu. The Stephanie rules of the world will continue to blame everyone but the causers in chief of such dire times, and their out-of-touch proclamations only serve as a gift to Republicans who only need to sit back and let the chattering class talk themselves out of power. The problem with Republicans is that they've also grown addicted to big spending jags, and as a party, they don't have the nards to turn off the spigot. Mark my words, the only salvation is to cut spending, shrink government, and get it the hell out of the way before we fast-track it to fiscal hell. Sure, I may be Cassandra, and no one believes my prophecies, but I'd rather be her than Stephanie Rule's Marie Antoinette, who's lost her mind and her head. And that's the memo. Last week, we learned inflation surged to the highest level in 30 years, 7.4 million Americans still very much out of work. So even if some people had any savings, many are burning through it too quickly. How could a former business reporter be so wrong about the economy when so many are feeling the awful pinch? The party panel is back. Daniel Turner, Christopher Hahn, and Olivia Rondo. Uh, so, Daniel, obviously, I will start with you. It's up to people how they spend their own money, isn't it? It really is. And, and what Stephanie said, it's not a dirty and it's not a secret. Um, it's people's private property. And the fact that she thinks that they have, if they have saved, that they want to use their savings to buy bread and pay their electric bills, so you should be okay with that, um, it is beyond insulting. It's these nonsense policies created by a very clueless administration. They are the catalyst that is driving this. You're absolutely right. Republicans love their big spending, too. So I wish there was hope on the other side of the aisle. But this inflation problem is caused by Joe Biden. They are doing absolutely nothing to prevent it because they don't know what to do to prevent it. And then they've got lap boys like Stephanie in the media who are saying, hey, it's actually OK. In fact, it's a good thing. Yeah, and, and I hope people stop saying that. I hope people stop trying to sell this inflationary environment as some sort of a boon to working people, because it's not, Chris. It sucks. When your heating costs go up 60 percent, uh, when the cost of steak doubles, uh, when you can't afford to buy hot dogs, it really, really blows. And for someone like Stephanie Rule to say, we can all afford these expensive things, so let us just go buy them. You know, that, that's a woman who worked for Credit Suisse and Deutsche Bank. That is not someone who has to choose between uh, paying the heating bill or uh, paying for uh, kids to go on a very minor winter vacation to the Hamptons. Yeah, I agree. 
Uh, I agree. It was it was a, a bonehead thing to say. Uh, brava on the Cassandra reference. Uh, loved it. Uh, but let me let me combat what was just said about the president. The same people who were calling him a socialist now want the president to control the markets. The reason why we have inflation <laughs> right now is because there were supply there chain issues that were caused by the pandemic of last year, and now mm -hmm. the supply chain is working up to meet the demand. Things cost more. It should level out. It is the president's political problem, but he did not cause this problem, and it will will not go away on its own. We have to. It has to be worked out within the market, and I am I am dumbfounded every time these free market capitalists are now blaming President Biden because he won't intervene in the free market, mm -hmm. but he shouldn't. I think that's pretty much the opposite of what they're saying. But uh, thank you for that, Olivia. I mean, well, he just said it on your okay, show so like two seconds ago. I was, I was listening. <laughs> you, you were listening to what? No, no, no. I, now I want you to clarify this. What were you listening to? Hot shot. I was your prior, your prior guest just was blaming Joe Biden for inflation. That you can't blame yes. Joe Biden for yes, the market. You absolutely yeah. can. Inflation. When you spend trillion, okay, when you okay, inject me, trillions more Joe dollars into an oversaturated for... economy, you're going to create a further inflationary state. And when you have wages that okay, are going and, up, and, and, that is going to make inflation worse. And then what's going to happen? People are going to start firing people because they can't afford to pay those wages. And Kennedy, then you go into Kennedy, a recession. There are, there so what happens well, when you have... Well-documented supply chain matters causing inflation. Yeah. It is, has nothing okay, to do but, but guess with what, the American Chris? rescue guess out, or the, or okay. the, which the money hasn't even okay. put, guess put what? in the economy at this point. No one in this yeah. administration understands inflation and supply chain, how they work together, how they work separately. If you, if you reconcile one, you will still have problems with the other. And this administration is hoping like hell that the supply chain issues even themselves out next year, and that's why they're calling inflation transitory. The problem is the other issues that I listed, they're not going away. Now we're going to let Olivia talk. Go ahead. Why are we not talking about the actual reason behind the issues with the supply chains? Why are we not talking about as soon as Biden comes into office, there's suddenly a problem with the oil pipelines. Oil is or gas is suddenly four dollars in D.C. I've never seen it this high here before. I don't know why we're not talking about covid lockdowns, uh, stopping truckers and basically cutting the supply chain in half. I mean, we just have so many people who are being not, who are not being used right now. So many resources that are not being used right now because of such and such mandate and such and such uh, rule. Uh, because of OSHA. So I'm really curious. Uh, I'm really curious to know, Christopher, if it's not Biden's fault for these supply chain issues and what is it? Because the market, the people did not decide for the gas the prices market? to go up like this. The, the global market is what is causing the gas prices to go up. Gas is a global commodity traded Lies. internationally. Okay. And the Nonsense. president of the United States does not this control that market. Gas is high all okay. over the world Chris, right now, Chris, not just in the United breath. States of America. Take a deep breath. You should learn this. Chris. Take a deep breath. No, Let's sir. let Daniel respond. Go ahead, Daniel. Uh, and as someone who works in the energy space, as Chris said before, he's a lawyer. I'm an energy expert. This administration has punished the energy, energy, energy industry from its first day in office. We produced two million fewer barrels of oil per day than we did a year ago. That is causing the supply, the, the supply to dwindle and the price is skyrocketing. Everything needs energy. Everything manufactured, transported, produced requires energy. All those prices, prices are going up. That is also driving inflation. Why is there an energy crisis? Joe Biden. So to just say it's a global problem yeah. is cowardice Wrong. and it's a lack of vision and leadership. It is a global problem. Global OPEC market. Plus it's cut OPEC supply problem. last year because oil was being given away. Yeah, so, oil, so you so were why isn't, paid why to take a barrel of oil a year ago. It's OPEC the Saudis. Cut supply. Yeah, so why they have isn't not OPEC... brought it back up to current demand. <laughs> That's why it costs Jeez. more. Oh, Chris. <laughs> I, uh, I oh, love you're it. an energy expert, but you don't realize that yeah. point. It's you want to get that point with point me? Because that's what actually happened. You're on a business network. Learn how it works. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Um, I think uh, I think Daniel did a satisfactory job explaining that, and uh, and Olivia did a great job <laughs> explaining why there are so many issues created <laughs> by and compounded by government, including the vaccine mandate. So you have a very tricky labor market, but you're telling public and private employers to fire employees wholesale because of vaccine mandates. That's going to make everything better. I guess that's a real global problem, Chris. All right, party panel, thanks so much. Daniel, Chris, and Olivia, great to see you all. I love them.